Hey guys, Mr. Renyard here. Today we are going to go over uh, Grade Six, Module Five, um, Lessons, I believe eight, maybe nine, and we're going to be finding the distance between two ordered pairs uh, using a graph, but also using a formula. So stick around. Hope this helps, and have a good day. All right. Let's start with something simple like naming these two points. As you can see, they're both in quadrant one because this would be two, this would be three, and this would be four, just a recap on what we did before. So now I want to list what those points would be. And so this one is four to the right from zero, which would make my x four. And then I'm going to go up six. Okay, and the point over here, we'll call this A, we'll call this B is going to be, let's see, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 to the right. And then it looks like it's the same amount up, which was 6, so 11, 6. So these are the ordered pairs that I would write for A and for B. And if I wanted to, I could connect them with a line uh, and keep that pretty simple. I'm going to try and do it as straight as I can. Whoop, that didn't work. Let's try it again here. Whoop, there we go. So um, if we had that line to connect these two points and imagining it was straight, the question is how long is that line? So let's take a moment before we come back to the graph and let's just slide on over here to a nice blank whiteboard type space. And we're going to look at these two points, as you can see up here, just as ordered pairs. We had 4, 6, and 11, 6. All right, what do you notice? Okay, so we notice that the x coordinates are different and that the y coordinates are the same. All right, so if the y coordinates are the same, that tells me we're making a straight line because they're the same distance up from zero, which tells me if I'm looking at distance, I don't have to worry about them at all. I can just cross them out of there just like that. So I'm really looking at what is the diff distance between 4 and 11. Okay, so it really doesn't matter what kind of line I'm making. Um, if I had a number line, like so, and I was going from 4 to 11, which would put 0 down over here, all right? How many units is that? 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then there's 11. How far is it from 4 to 11? So, <clears throat> There's some mathematical principles here. The first thing to recognize is that since both of these are positive, I am not crossing zero. When I go from 4 to 11, I'm already higher than zero, and I'm going to keep going higher than zero. I do not cross zero. Would this be true if they were both negative? Yes, it would. So if I had these as both negative points, okay, zero would be here, negative 4 would be here, and then 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then this would be my negative 11. So um, if it was negative 4 and negative 11, I would also not cross 0. So when my two points that are different, my x's in this case are the different ones, have the same symbol or are both positive or are both negative, and I'm not crossing 0, I can use absolute value of points minus absolute value of the other point, and I will get the distance of that point. All right, so I will subtract my absolute values if I don't cross zero. All right, so remember that. Don't cross zero, same symbols I'm subtracting. So absolute value, okay, as we have seen many times before, is if I have uh, the absolute value of any number, let's say the absolute value of four, right, is going to be 4, because the question is, how many units from 0 is 4? That's what absolute value says. That's what this says. The absolute value of 4 is 4. So the, what is the distance from 0 of 4? Well, it's 4. Okay, what's the absolute value of negative 4? That's right, it's 4 as well, because how many units from 0 is negative 4? four units. So absolute value simply means what is its distance from zero. So something to think about, <clears throat> absolute value is an integer's distance from zero and therefore it is always 
positive. So let's go back to our original formula. All right, the formula was absolute value of A minus absolute value of B to find the distance since I am j not crossing zero. So what is the absolute value of 11? That is 11, right? <coughs> Excuse me, so the absolute value of 11 minus the absolute value of four will give you my distance. Well, wouldn't that just be 11 minus four? which of course is seven. So the distance should be seven. And I can go back and try and prove it. So to prove it, I just I count it on my number line. Let's see, all right, so here we are at four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It is seven units apart. And I can go back now over to my graph and I can check, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and so that is how I can find the distance between two points, uh, two ordered pairs that are in the same plane um, and not crossing a zero line. All right, but what if it gets crazy like over here at C and D? All right, I've got negative four, two for point C and negative four, negative six for point D. How would I find the distance between these two without just counting, right? Counting is super easy, but sometimes I don't, I don't have a graph or I can't graph. What if I just had these numbers? So let's slide over to our whiteboard space and look at our points. So we have negative four, two and negative four, negative six. And again, what do we notice? We notice that uh, one of the coordinates, okay, and it, what matters is that they're both my x. My x's are the same. So what we found out we can do with those is we can kind of cross those out. We don't need those. And we're looking at two and we're looking at negative six. So basically we would have a number line, okay, which we'll refer to near the end just to double check, and we have two and negative six. So before I fill that out, let's look at the formula. So we knew that if we don't cross zero, right, it's absolute value minus absolute value. But since we are crossing zero, we have one positive, one negative. So that means we are crossing zero. We're gonna go down to zero and then farther down to negative six or up to zero and then farther up to two. So instead of subtracting the absolute value, okay, we're going to add the absolute values. That's it. Only two formulas you need to know to find distance is either subtracting or adding based on are you crossing zero or not. So we're just going to do absolute value of two plus the absolute value of negative six. Okay, what is the absolute value of two? How far from zero is two? It is two. And then how far from zero is negative six? What is its absolute value? That's what these symbols mean, by the way. Let's write it as six. So two plus six equals eight, right? So our distance should be eight units. And we can prove it on our number line. So here would be zero, two would be two to the right, and then negative six would be six to the left. So here is negative six, here is two. How many units is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I can pop back over to my graph I can double check that right here and just count it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it does work. And just for a fun little quiz, see how you're doing on this. See if you can uh, find the ordered pairs for each point, A through F, then try to use those ordered pairs with the formula of either absolute value minus absolute value or absolute value plus absolute value depending on am I crossing zero or not. So do these cross a zero line, do these cross a zero line, or do these cross a zero line. And then do the formula to find the distance and double check on the graph. Go ahead, pause the video, see if you can figure that out. Okay, so uh, for A and B, we have the points negative four, four for B and negative nine, four for A, uh, which makes our Y coordinates the same and therefore we can cross them out. So we're looking at the distance between negative nine and negative four. Are we crossing zero? So our formula would be the absolute value of negative nine minus 
absolute value of negative 4, which is just 9 minus 4, giving us a distance of 5 units. So we double check, and we will just count our, our units, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that worked out. All right, what about C and D? So we have 8, 2 for D and 8, 8 for C. Again, we're not crossing 0, so we're just going to subtract the absolute values of, um, let's see, the 8 and the 8 on x cancel, so it's just 8 and 2. Absolute value of 8 minus absolute value of 2. And I always just choose the one that's going to have the, the bigger absolute value first, um, because in distance it really doesn't matter which direction I'm going as long as I'm measuring the distance between, which is just going to be 8 minus 2, which of course is 6. And then when I count it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it works out. So last one, E and F. Okay, so we have negative 3, negative 6 for E, 7, negative 6 for F. We are crossing the 0 Y line. All right, so we're going, as you can see, our negative 6's are the same in our Y coordinate. We're going from negative 3 to 7. So in this case, we're going to add our absolute values. In this case, it doesn't matter which order you put them in because adding can be either or since we have the uh, commutative property of addition. So that's just going to be 3 plus 7, which of course is 10. So we can check it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And the distance between E and F was 10 units. So I hope this helped you find distances between two ordered pairs. Um, and figure out how to use the two different formulas depending on if we are or are not crossing zero. Thanks for joining my class. Have a good day. I'm about to go be From the streets of Cali down to Argentina, I keep rappers on their toes like they ballerinas. Now I'm believers.